So um, we're going to have Kyle open the Merlot for us and first of all, show us how the easiest way to open that bottle of, 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 <laughs> of Merlot and um, we're going to go ahead and taste that for just, just a little taste of it today. Most definitely. So I, it's a Josh, you said? It is Josh, mm -hmm. um, one of our uh, um, most successful brands here at Bristol's. Um, and I love Josh, right? Joseph Carr is the name of, of, of the original owner. And he just wanted to make a young, fun, enjoyable wine for every day. And mm -hmm. it just so happens that the characteristics are of those of a traditional Merlot, mm -hmm. which makes it food friendly in certain, certain aspects. And remember, this is, the, this is the wine that you can have with any dish Absolutely. On, your, on your table, any dish. So you want to have a bottle of Merlot in your arsenal whether it's Josh or uh, any definitely. other brand, you want to have a Merlot because generally speaking, they go with any dish. All right. This particular one, it's a 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's, it's actually very, very good. I had some of that before, so I can tell you <laughs> it's good. It's really smooth. All right. Mm. So folks always have this question about opening from the top lip and the bottom lip. Traditionally, we've always in the service industry opened from the bottom. Um, the original casings of wine were lead, and so we wanted to minimize any cross-contamination possibilities. So we still do that. Uh -huh. um, through practice, though, it still gives you an opportunity to have a nice clean cut um, yes. for presentation table side and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So when we cut our foil and we literally insert our cork slightly to the right or the left of the center, it takes about four or five spins, three, mm -hmm. four, five, most Cock screws today are double hinged. Mm -hmm. So we go down on the first hinge and pull up, and then we go down on the second hinge. And we really try not to disturb anybody else when we're pulling out the cock, unless it's celebration kind of time. Mm -hmm. We'll do a lot of that on New Year's. I guess. And then we will remove that cock, and that's us. Is there, is there, is there a need to, to have the wine breathe a uh, little bit? I, I suggest that in uh, a lot of the red wines, mm -hmm. um, the most, most of the red wines we have in our market are one of two, very young. And mm -hmm. so letting it breathe gives it an opportunity to get rid of some of the unpleasant pleasantries. That's what do we mean by breathing? I know what, to, what is breathing. We're allowing um, some of the molecules to uh, interact with some oxygen mm -hmm. uh, and express themselves a little bit more. Okay. Right? And more times than not, that expression is a little bit more favorable than if we were to pour it straight out the bottle without allowing it to breathe. Okay, right? so you really want to actually pour that into a decanter yeah, most definitely. And, and then um, have it just to sit for a little while. And then that goes back to our appearance of sophistication. Absolutely. Right? As much Buy as yourself I love, a decanter. Yeah, as much as I love the Josh and the Josh label, I think this wine looks 10 times better in a decanter. And know? a decanter, so, obviously, is, it's a... It's a um, globe-shaped um, uh, glass. Yeah. With a nice long neck kind of thing. And it's just, again, uh, a wider surface area. Yes. So more interaction with the wine and the glass and, and, and the air. Uh, yes. 100%. Cool. So we're going to just taste this nice Merlot. Oh, yeah, let me get this right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now, is this generally a red wine glass? No, so this, <laughs> so in this style of glasses, mm -hmm. this is what we refer to as our white wine glass. Uh -huh. But the shape of this glass resembles the iOS official tasting glasses, and so that's why I use them for red and wine, especially in these ah, tasting. okay. So the, the, uh, the uh, shorter bowl mm -hmm. and the uh, closer rim allows you to put your nose in and, and literally absorb all of those aromas and everything else in the concentration, right? If we mm -hmm. were to go in the regular red wine glass, by the time we, it's like we, letting the wine breathe again, right? We open the wine, we let it breathe, and we put it in a larger glass, and it's sitting, it's breathing a little bit more. And so sometimes we would have lost some of those aromas in the first go, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit more difficult for us to pick it up. And I in see. these smaller glasses, and we put our nose in, or we pick up the plum yeah. and the black currant. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm. Mm, this is nice. This is a nice... It's even a slight cedar, I was just... cedar t um, smell to it, so... Uh. Giving us the indication that there's some wood interaction in it yes, already. Yes, oh, absolutely. Girl, so it was, wood, it was fermented in, in a barrel. Yes, most definitely. Uh -huh. it, you, you need to be able to pick up these kinds of things. Um, again, because we want you to know your style of wine, so you know your go-to. And then also we want you to be comfortable to explore a little bit more and try some other stuff. This is, per for me, this is perfect. 
it's a little dry it's a lot dry actually um, but it's for me it's perfect um, so the drying you speak about is that tannin structure in the middle yes. and then you have the acid in the back mm -hmm. on the side those are the two characteristics that make wine food friendly oh right? my goodness so that's everything you picked up on is what makes this going to be so much more better when it's on the side of that turkey right um so that's oh, i love that bread. love it uh, i love, love it bread. ladies and gentlemen it was a delight speaking about um talking chatting about wines and what wines we ought to be serving this christmas with our Christmas dinner. We had the white Riesling, we had the um, Sauvignon, uh, not, I want to say Sauvignon Blanc so, <laughs> so bad, bad, but it's not, we didn't have any Sauvignon <laughs> Blanc on here. We had Cabernet Sauvignon and we had the Merlot. And the Merlot, as we indicated, should be that all around wine that we serve. It's red, it's heavy, um, slightly heavy body, depending on what brand you have. And that is what you ought to have on the table for the entire meal. The whites, the Rieslings and so forth, you want to have prior to as you engage conversation, as you cook, whatever. But it was del delightful to be speaking with such a, a well, I mean, the, the amount of information, we couldn't share everything today. Yeah, Mr. Stubbs, it was a delight talking with the, you today. The was um, I hope this isn't the last conversation. Absolutely <laughs> not. We're gonna be back and we're gonna come back to you, in fact, next week, during the um on in what you should be serving to bring in the new year we had a tumultuous 2020 and we're going to bring in 2021 with a bang Absolutely. ladies and gentlemen thank you we will see you in a few days when we discuss what's happening for the new year thank you very much for joining me